Hello, my crafty friends. Thank you for joining me today. I'm gonna to share with you a case of a card. This is my original, and I'm gonna change it up a little bit, show you how to do with that. But the basic card is gonna be the same. Same stamp set, just different colors and papers. This is watercolored, so I'm going to share with you how I got that watercolor image. And I'm introducing some new dies. This is the Spotlight on Nature stamp and die set. It is fabulous. It's the first one I ordered from the new catalog. It was actually only available to demonstrators that went to our onstage convention. And I'm so glad that this is the one I chose. Beautiful images, some nice sentiments. And then you know, I keep my dies in here. And as you'll see, there are three different die images. So there's this, which you can actually just see on here. So there's this one that's got these, like a little floral kind of thing or an eyelet. And then another one here, which boy, wouldn't that be cute like with ribbon going through it maybe? And then this one here um, just is more ribbed. So it's really a great set, 12 dies in all. I've got the rest of them out so that I can show you um, how to use them. So uh, this has also got a new color. This is basic beige, which is a new um, neutral color. And then this one is uh, petunia pop, which is one of our new annual colors but we're gonna use uh, some different colors in the, in the card that I'm gonna share with you today. My name is Linda Edwards. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I hold classes in my home. Um, I also share uh, inspiration on, uh, on YouTube here or Facebook. I'm not sure where you're, where you're seeing me, but uh, it could be on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Pinterest. You can follow me as crafty hair and designs on all the socials. I do sell all the uh, items that I will be sharing with you today that I'll be using, and you can find those at my online store, www.craftyheronddesigns.com. So let's go ahead and get started. I am gonna color the image on watercolor paper. This is the Fluid 100 watercolor paper from Stampin' Up. It comes, you know, this size, I think it's like a five by seven. And you get, yeah, five by seven and you get 10 to a package. It's a really nice weight. It's got some, some heft to it, so it works really well for water coloring. You could also use our thick white paper and um, that would work as well. Just You just have to be careful not to use too much water. Um, regular paper will pill if you use uh, water. So um, the card base is actually eight and a half by eight and a half by five and a half, and it's scored at four and a quarter. And you can see I'm gonna use wild wheat as my card base. I am gonna use the petunia pop. This is a scrap that we'll need. We'll do some die cutting with that. So I'm gonna set that aside. And a couple of pieces of basic white. This is gonna be for the inside. This is three and a half by four and three quarters. And then just a scrap here for the sentiment. And this is the paper that I got all the inspiration for the colors from. This is a new paper in our catalog. It's called Thoughtful Journey. It comes as a six by six paper. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it. I'm thinking I wanna cut it like right through the middle here. So um, I'll share that with you. Now I am cat's cat sitting and I'm not sure what my cat, this cat is gonna do. It could be interesting, <laughs> I don't know. So we'll see what happens. I've never done a video with with him here. So um, my son and daughter-in-law are in Martinique with their um, in-laws for a two week trip. And so we are cat sitting. Fergus is my, is their cat's name. So this could be entertaining. He's a beautiful cat, but he does like to kind of hang out. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is take this stamp and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp it in here. Because I know that I want this this is gonna be my image. I think I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna kinda of just line it up just so that I kinda of know. I know I want this to be, you know, it's a circle, so it won't matter this way or that way, but I think, yes, I can see that I can just line it up like that. I don't wanna go up too high or too low, but I can see that if I'm just about a half an inch from there, I should that should work. So as you're, as you're kind of designing, I mean, one of my goals today is to kinda of get you to think a little bit about what you are designing. So I'm gonna actually stamp off. I have not made this one before sharing it with you. So 
this is going to be interesting for all of us. What I just did off camera, and I apologize, I stamped that image. I thought it's kind of dark. I want it to be a little bit lighter. So I stamped it once and then a second time. And I thought, yeah, that's that's the, the lightness that I kind of want. I don't want it super dark. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and stamp that once and then stamp it a second time. And I said I wanted it to be a little bit a little bit above and a little bit over. So there we go. Nice image, let it absorb into the paper a little bit. Great. So I want it to be kind of light because I don't want to see too much of the, um, the too many of the lines. I do want some, I want some of it to show through, but not too many. So I'm going to bring in, I'm going to do the water coloring first, and then we'll let, get that a chance to dry while we, um, while we do the rest of the card. So my original card, I used Granny Apple Green for the leaves. I'm gonna bring that back for you. See the Granny Apple Green for the leaves, but this paper's a little bit, um, it's Mossy Meadow is the color in here, but I didn't want Mossy Meadow because I thought it would be too dark. So we're gonna try Pear, or no, not Pear Pizzazz, that's an old color, Old Olive. So I'm taking a block. This is just one of our small acrylic blocks which this size A is no longer available, but you could do it on a larger block. And I'm going to just get some ink on there. And these are our watercolor pens. So uh, I'm gonna take it when you, okay, a few things about these watercolors. It took me a while to figure this out. So they come three to a pack. They've got different lengths, different sizes, and there's one larger. Let me see, get that for you. Water painters is what they're called. Here's the the thicker one, so if you wanted to do like a background, this is really a great, great shape. But I'm gonna use these two. I'm gonna start with the smaller one for the leaves because it's pretty small. Actually, either one would work. You fill them with water, and I will tell you that they, they to unscrew them, they're backwards. So normally when you are filling something, right, we turn it, we turn it this way to, to, un, to, unloosen, to loosen it. Well, this is backwards. So just be aware that if you get them and they're not working and then you just add water there. So I've already done that. And see, see here, I wanna go, I wanna tighten it like that, but it tightens the other way. I've never seen anything like that. I don't know why that happens, but, but it does. So there you go. All right, so now there's a little, it'll say, it says push, I don't know if you can see that. And it just means anywhere in here. So push, it's gonna bring, see how it brings some water out? There we go. And so I always start with the lightest, well, I'm gonna start where I think I'm gonna need the darkest because it, it's hard to know how much. I mean, I can get a little bit of an idea there, but it's hard to know how much, uh, how dark that's gonna be. So I know at the base of the leaves, I know I'm gonna want it to be dark. And I know I can always come back in and add more color. So I'm just very lightly, you can see this has got a really nice, thin, thin brush so that it does let me um, uh, use the, um, do the lines nice and thin. So I, I did back in the day, I did some folk art painting. I don't know if anybody's ever done that. And so that definitely did help me to understand a little bit about how to use a brush. You really, I don't know if you can see this. I am just barely pressing down. I'm letting the brush do the work. Just dragging just a little bit on the tip. And once I get the, uh, I could turn the paper. Once I get the, the thickness that I want, I can go back or the color that I want. And I'm kind of just dragging the watercolor that in through to the ends of the leaves. So starting at the base, because I know that's where I want it to be kind of the darkest, just because if you're looking at a leaf, typically there's some shadow. It typically is a little bit darker at the base and then it gets uh, thinner as it goes. Now, it's not critical um, that, you know, if it's a little too light there, you know you can come back over it. So you can see that I'm kind of going and changing, like doing a little bit on one leaf and then coming back to it, letting it dry a little bit. 
Um, and then I'm going back over and picking up a little more color. Now then see that one's kind of dark, so I won't go all the way to the end with that one. I'll let that kind of dry out and I'll go ahead and come here. I have, I want to get that a little bit darker. This one, I like this with the wild wheat. I'll show, I'll bring the other card back so that you can see and kind of compare the difference. Um, I used the basic beige with the other one, so you really don't hardly see the lines at all. But this one, you do kind of see the lines a little bit, but I like the way that looks. All right, so now I'm going back and kind of with the lightest color, kind of going to the ends, dragging that water through to the ends. And here's another one, kind of bringing it all the way to the end. And then this one where it was so dark, see how I can kind of go back and now it's lightening up a little bit. All right, so I do want to create some lines there. Um, so I'm going to come in and I don't have a lot of water on this end. Can you see that? Like the, the water's pretty much here. Now I really want just kind of, like I already, already know that I have water in my brush, but I want to pick up just the ink. And what I'm going to do is kind of just really gently bring in and just kind of do some lines. And this is kind of where Stampin' Up! has given us the lines already on the um, image, the stamped image. And I'm just kind of drawing some of those in. I could pick up a little more ink, get them a little bit longer, and maybe a little bit there. So just to give a little bit of dimension to these leaves. Oh, that one's not dark enough. So. I couldn't, kind of couldn't see them, so I knew I wanted to come back and do a little bit more. All right, so now I'm gonna, now I want some water. So I'm just dripping this, kind of cleaning it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna come back and do a little more, add a little more water so that those lines aren't quite so harsh. I want them to be a little bit softer. And then you can kind of just kind of keep going back and forth till you get the look that you want. Um, but you do want it to be a little bit dry before you before you add a second layer, but you can continue to add more layers. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm just gonna, a little bit of water. This is just on a paper towel. I don't have any more to do with that one. So I'm gonna clean that ink, that block, turn that over, and I'm gonna start on my flowers. So again, making sure my brush is done. I'm gonna use this smaller one for both um, just because, and I'm going to put that aside. So now I'm going to bring in the Petunia Pop and I'm basically going to do the same thing. Get some ink on here and add some water. Okay. My green is a little bit wet still, so I'm going to just gently come in. And this one, oh, I want it to be, I'm going to start you can kind of see how that's going. So I'm, I'm kind of starting with the light, very light color, getting some water on there. And then I'm kind of coming in and adding more um, deeper color. But I want to start off with just a really, really light, just getting water all over that image, getting it wet so that when I come back in, with the darker colors, it'll kind of spread. So, of course, this is a little different because the flowers are a little bit larger. So I've got a little bit more room to kind of play with. And you know, it's a watercolor image, so it doesn't need to be all precise in the, within the lines. You know, you can kind of go out a little bit and be a little more artistic. Okay, so I've kind of got the basics in, and you see I kind of left some white space, I like that. Now I'm gonna come in again and I'm gonna just pick up some of the darker color and I wanna kinda of come in from the base and give it just a little more dimension. That's the word I was looking for. I like the way this wild wheat still kinda of shows. I really wasn't sure what was gonna happen, but I don't know, you'll have to let me know when we're done and we have both of them done, whether you have a preference for one versus the other. And I'm just really kinda of playing. I'm, I don't have professional experience as watercolorists, but you know, Stampin' Up! gives us these tools that just make us look so good. And 
think that's it. I'm gonna, I lost kind of some of the lines here. You know, you can see here the wild wheat. Let me see if you can see that. You can still see a lot of the wild wheat, which I like, whereas this one kind of covered it up, but that's okay. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a little bit more, try and give a little bit of dimension to those petals that I lost. So you see how I did that? I just did a few more lines there to give a little bit, little bit of dimension. But I'm gonna leave kind of the, I like the way the top there, it doesn't have like color in parts of it. So you can see the wild wheat. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna set it aside while we assemble the rest of the card. That way um, it should be dry because I'm gonna have to run it through the cut and emboss machine. And if if you're you know in a hurry or whatever, you can always dry it with your um, heat gun. But I'm hoping not to have to do that. I'm hoping I, it'll dry before I... All right, just clean that brush. Make sure you clean it off really well. It'll stain a little bit. You can kind of see that. I mean, we did this in class, so these were already stained a little bit, but as you saw, it didn't affect the final product in any way. Okay, I'm excited. I think that turned out really cool. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside to dry, and now we're gonna, let's cut this piece. So here, I'll bring this back in. This is the piece here that I wanna cut. So it's two inches, which works really well because this paper is six by six, so you can get three different designs out of it. So two inches um, and it's five and a half wide. So let's bring our paper trimmer in. And I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it at two inches. So, two, so I get three pieces out of here. And then we'll decide which piece we wanna use for the card. I have an idea, but you know, I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, so this was our card base. Um, and uh, let me see, fold it in half and then do a little burnish there. And let's see, let's cut, now, yeah, let's do our, let me think about this, we'll do our thanks and our, we'll do some more stamping. So. My thanks I want to do in the Petunia Pop. And it's just going to be cut out of a circle, so I'm going to bring this in so I kind of have an idea of where it is. And just kind of do that. Okay, set that aside, and then I'll die cut that. And then I'm also going to do the butterfly. So now the question is, do I want the butterfly to be in the wheat or the green? <laughs> what do you think? I did it with the green, which matched that, but maybe I'll do the wheat. All right, we'll try the well wheat, just because it's something kind of different. Although I'll tell you, this pad is so juicy. You know what, let me bring, let's see how that's gonna look. I want to show you. That's okay. Sometimes, like the new pads, they're so juicy. Let me show you a little trick on how to deal with that. Um, here. Okay. So, when you have a pad that's really juicy, and if it sometimes it'll be a little like mottled when you first get it, your Im it doesn't stamp a really good image. So what you can do, this is an Amazon gift card, which is no longer active. And I'm gonna just move some of that ink away from the center of the pad. And I'll just clean it here. And let's see if that'll help that image. All right. Let me... All right. Moved it away. Tap, tap, tap. I'm going really lightly, but I can see that I have enough ink on there. And so I'm going to do that. Okay, yeah, that was good because it was, there's a lot of ink in there. Now you certainly could also um, and tap it off, you know, stamp it off like we did the other image. But I, I think I want it. I think I kind of like that. So that's going to be fussy cut. So let me go ahead and start with that. 
get that out of the way and then I will die cut all the other images. I probably should have done this so you guys didn't have to watch it, but you can always just fast forward through it. That's the beauty of doing these videos. You can go at your own pace. You can stop and start and go back and, um, you know, yeah, stop if there's an interruption and uh, if you don't have something right on hand. So feel free to fast forward through this. I will tell you that I do host hold classes in my home. We did this card at a class, not at, sometimes in my home, sometimes just in my neighborhood. I've got a, a public space that we can use, which is a beautiful space. It's got lots of great big lights and uh, lots of room to spread out. So we host, I host classes there and I do a couple of them a month. And if you want some information, if you're in the Greensboro area and you might be interested in coming to classes, I'd love to have you. I'm in Greensboro, Georgia. I know a lot of people think North Carolina. No, it's Greensboro, Georgia. We're in the Lake Oconee area. And um, it's a great, it's been a great way to meet people and to stay connected, you know, make some friends. So uh, feel free to join me. I also offer uh, most of those classes I'll offer as like a created home class. So I'll send you the kit. I, you know, you'll, you see the videos and you can do them uh, in the comfort of your own home or gather a couple of friends together and, um, and go ahead and make the cards. And so like this one, for example, you know, as you saw, I mean, I'm used, I'm using different paper and that's the beauty of something like this is you can use what you have on hand. You might even use a different stamp set. You might have something else, um, that you, you can use or different, different dies that are circles or squares or, or whatever. All right. So let's go ahead and do our die cutting. I think that's my next step. Set that aside, bring in my die cutting machine. And ah, this is the um, cut and emboss machine, the Stampin' Up. And we will use, because we're using the dies, let's see, I'll bring in this Petunia Pop first. And the Stampin' Up, the, the Cut and Emboss machine tells you what, what plate it is, what the um, sandwich is. So plate one, plate two, and plate three. So this is plate one, plate two, this is plate three, one. You can see I've got a little card stock in here. Sometimes this plate has gotten a little, I use it a lot, so it's gotten a little worn. So I go ahead and put a little piece of card stock so I get a better cut image. Um, with that. So you sometimes you might, you know, in your machine, if your dies aren't cutting as smoothly as you would like, that's a great thing to do. Just try like a, we call it a shim, a piece of cardstock in between to see if you can get it. So there's our first one. Let's see. Uh, where's my thank you? It's right here. Put that aside. So I'm going to cut this one out. There's my thanks. Now you can cut multiples out at one time, but I'm going to just do them one at a time. Here's the thanks. And I'm gonna use a punch for the background of this because it just happened to have a punch, which is this perfect size. Um, and I'm gonna bring in my watercolor and you can see that it is dry. And I am going to just go ahead and cut that. So I'm just kind of watching so that I've got a little bit of room on either side of the flowers here. Oh, that just turned out so pretty. I've got to remember these, this color combination. Oh my gosh, I just love it. I hope you do too. The wild wheat with that petunia pop. Ah, oh, I'm excited, sorry. I get excited about this kind of stuff, it's so fun. I hope you do too. All right, let's see here. So there's our card base. We've got our pieces. Make sure they all, all the little bits are out. Isn't that beautiful? And this is gonna layer on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then, oh yeah, we have to use our punch. So this is the one and three, one and three quarter punch. And I am going to 
punch a circle out of the petunia pop. I don't know, I might change my mind and decide I need to do the wild wheat. Let's see. Um, so these two are gonna be layered. So I wanted you to be able to see that, but I'm gonna wait because maybe I'll use the wild wheat. All right, let's go ahead and glue this. Okay, I like the liquid glue, but you use whatever adhesive is works for you. And I'm oh, sorry, I'm doing it off camera. I'm just really kind of centering it. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but I only put adhesive kind of in the center. I didn't want any adhesive to come around the outside. All right, let's see. I'm gonna wait and do that. So now we've got some options here. We've got this one, which, eh, you know, it's okay. Nope, 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 nope. This is the bottom. Well, that's pretty. Yeah, see, it's kind of tricky because you get, I'll cut off one end, but you'll only see up to there. All right, that's a possibility. This was the one that I thought that I would want because it's got the wheat and the purple in it. Um, so I think, let's see. Well, I've definitely narrowed it down to those. This is actually gonna cover that up, isn't it? So if I do it that way, I see a little pop of the wheat there. Uh oh, my kit kitty's Kit Kat's coming. But I do think, one thing I know is, oh, here he is, is I am gonna do the, can you see him in the, yes, you can see him in the camera. He's right here. You know what's gonna happen next? He's gonna wanna sit right, he, there we go. There he goes. <laughs> Fergus, Fergus, sweetie, you can't be here. You can't be here right now. Come on, I'm gonna have to, well, I don't know, what do you think? We might be able to work with him. What do you think? Are you enjoying <laughs> He wants a little attention. Fergus. All right, let's see. <laughs> there and there. This one's going to be on dimensionals. All right, I think I want it like that. That's what I'm going to do because I like to be able to see the wheat here. So that means I'm going to cut this off, cut this to five and a quarter. Now I could cut, you know, a little here and a little here. Maybe I should do that. Let's see. Oh, he's going to play. Oh, that's what I'll do. He's just went after the ring. So I just threw it down on the floor to see if he'll go after it. I could do that. Can you see that? Where I've just kind of cut a little bit off each side. I don't know. Are you yelling at me? Just make a decision out there. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take, I'm going to bring my cutter, my paper cutter. Of course, now you can't see it because of Mr. Fergus, but you'll have to trust me. I know I want it to be five and a half. So I'm cutting it. Paper is six, so I cut a quarter inch off each side. Yes, okay, so I, what I, yeah, I cut a quarter inch off of each side so that you could see the wild wheat. All right, here we go. Now we're basically just assembling it. I do have a little more stamping to do on the envelope and on the inside. Let's see, I think I want that. I don't know, I want it a little bit, a little bit low. Hey baby, hmm, you're such a good boy. So Fergus is gonna be with me for about hmm, three weeks. He's been here a week already. There we go. He really is a sweet, sweetie. He is from, Fergus is French. My daughter-in-law um, grew up in Lyon, France. My son uh, met her there and they um, got married and they moved back to the US. So Fergus came with them. Fergus is, he's quite the Kit Kat. All right, yeah, you know what? I'm glad I did the, uh, the wild wheat for the Butterfly. I mean, the green would work too. So if you don't have wild weed, it is one of the in colors. And I know sometimes people don't get all the different in colors, but um, but either, I think either the green, which is um, uh, Old Olive, or the wild wheat. And that's gonna go on dimensionals, two little dimensionals. And then the last little bit of stamping, I will show you for the for the inside. Now, because it's a thank you card, I don't generally write a sentiment 
on the inside for a thank you card. Um, oh boy, am I gonna be able to do this with Fergus sitting here? Hey buddy, am I gonna have to send you, send you off? I'm gonna just basically, let's bring this in. Let's get the ink um, here. Now I was hoping, I was debating on the gems because I am going to add some gems. Um, I was going to do wild wheat, but you know what? I think I'm going to stick with the, um, uh oh, I got a little bit on there. Here we go. I'm going to do just a little bit on the corner of the envelope, nice and light. And then on the inside, here's my little piece. For the inside, it's going to go that way. So again, stamping off and just a little bit, kind of there. There we go. And that'll go on the inside like that. So lastly, we have to have some embellishments. And my plan was to use this petunia pop. Let's see, um, and I think I will. I was kind of thinking I might want um, the wheat, but you know what, I don't think so, because if I do the the wheat, you won't really see it. Well, we'll see. Anyway, I couldn't find them, so I'm not gonna use them regardless. Let's see, we'll do one here. That was an attractive sound, wasn't it? There, and I like to do it in threes. Yeah, let's do it ah, down there. All right. Well, Fergus, thank you for joining us today. Say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> there's the card. Here's the, here's the envelope. There's the inside. Obviously, you know how to adhere that. I'm not going to worry about showing you that. And then here's the other one. So let me know. What do you think? The wild wheat or the basic beige? Definitely different looks. I think, you know what? Anybody would be happy to receive either one of them. That's the bottom line. But I hope you learned something today about maybe ways to use the colors in your uh, designer series paper or something around you to inspire you to do something different. And when we case a card, so in this case, uh -huh, the layout is exactly the same, but the colors are different. So the layout, the stamp set is the same, but I use different colors you could obviously adapt it um, to use whatever you have on hand. Thanks for joining me today. Again, my name is Linda Edwards. I'm with Crafty Heron Designs, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. This is Fergus. And um, I hope to see you again soon. I do have several different videos on my YouTube page, and some of them are actually on Facebook as well. So check them all out if you want to see more or be notified when I... Uh, upload a video, um, go ahead and follow me and hit the thumbs up button. If you like what you see, it helps others to find me and thanks for coming.